welcome to Converging Dialogues. This is Xavier Bonilla. On this episode, I'm speaking with Gregory Forth. Gregory is an anthropologist. He's been a professor at the University of Alberta for more than three decades. He's received his doctorate from University of Oxford. He's a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, and he's well published in the field. Uh, he has several academic books, and he is the author of Between Ape and Human, an Anthropologist on the Trail of a Hidden Hominoid. Uh, I was super uh, interested in this book and super excited to uh, talk to Greg. Uh, we had a fascinating conversation uh, about a really interesting topic. We started the conversation by talking about his background on working in Indonesia and different parts of Indonesia. Um, we give a kind of overview of the different species of humans. Um, we talk about the ape men is one way in which these uh, hominoids are discussed or how they're labeled and whether it's uh, this elusive species X or another uh, type of um, human, uh, kind of colloquially known as the maybe possibly hobbit human. Um, we talk about how the environment of Flores could be a good habitat for various humans. We talk about the characteristics of the Leo people. Those are the people that are indigenous to the area in Indonesia who have been eyewitnesses uh, to this potential um, other group of humans. We talk about the profile of the ape men, what they look like, the characteristics. We talk about the role of myths and legends. Uh, then he gets into some of the details in the book and then also in the conversation about the eyewitness accounts of the ape men and some of the specific details therein. And we end by talking about the likelihood of whether they actually exist. Um, there's no pictures, there's no video, so that's kind of the holy grail of evidence. Um, but there's some pretty interesting eyewitness accounts that are, you know, pretty compelling. Um, he has a kind of skeptics uh, notion in the in the book and in the conversation, which I think is probably, um, you know, the best thing to, best way to approach something like this. Um, either way, super fascinating. Uh, and his book is very, very good. It's, uh, it's a really compelling read. It's a really uh, kind of straightforward read. It's, it's not dense at all. And it's, uh, I, I found it very, very intriguing. So um, Greg is a wonderful person, uh, lovely to talk to. And so uh, now I bring you Gregory Forth. I'm here with Gregory Forth. Greg, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. I'm, uh, I'm excited to talk to you. Well, I'm pleased by your interest. Yes, yes. You, you've written a, a very interesting book. Um, it's really, uh, it, was, it was a page turner almost. I, I, uh, I couldn't Ooh. put it down once I started it. Uh, the book is called Between Ape and Human, an Anthropologist on the Trail of a Hidden Hominoid, which uh, I'm excited to talk to you about. So before we get into it, why don't you tell listeners uh, who you are, what you do, what you research, and uh, why you decided to write the book? Okay, well, that's a, quite a big question, but uh, um, I, I am an anthropologist. I, for, um, what, 33 or so years, I was uh, on faculty at the University of Alberta in, uh, it was in Western, Western Canada, of course, uh, in the Department of Anthropology. My geographical area, research-wise, is uh, Southeast Asia, more specifically uh, Indonesia, more specifically still Eastern Indonesia. Um, and I, um, well, I did my doctoral research in the 1970s, as a matter of fact, on an island called Sumba. Mm -hmm. And just north of Sumba is an island called Flores, where I started a new project, a new long-term open-ended project uh, in uh, well, effectively 19, 1984, and uh, the last time I went to Flores was um, what, about three three years or so ago in in, in 20, uh, 2018. So I, I I mean there are a number of uh, um, topics regarding uh, local um, local cultures and, and, and languages which, which uh, interest me. Um, the um, I, I became particularly interested in uh, um, hominoids. Um, you know, man-like uh, uh, creatures, uh, which um, are reported by local people on Flores back in in uh, in 19, 1984 when when I started this new project. And uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I I've never gone to Flores 
specifically to study the, this topic exclusively. There have always been, you know, other things uh, um, interesting to uh, to delve into. But I, I have, you know, different points uh, in my research on Flores, given it, um, yeah, quite quite major attention. So I, um, m- my interest was increased. Uh, um, in uh, what about 2001, 2003, when I um, went to the Leo uh, region uh, towards the eastern end of Flores. Um, in Leo, I found people, a few people, talking about uh, creatures they'd actually seen, which uh, mm. um, contrasted with the, the place I started out, which is in central Flores, a place called, called Nage, mm. people called uh, Nage, who, who talked about similar beings, uh, but... Uh, Reckoned that uh, they they were extinct, you know, several several hundred years. They they uh, they no longer uh, no longer been around. But in both cases, I um, you know, I I, I found fairly naturalistic uh, descriptions of uh, of the beings in, uh, in in question. You know, they sounded like a, a natural uh, species. And then, of course, in twenty o four. Um, the discovery team who'd found uh, Homo floresiensis, the, uh, mm-hmm. the so-called hobbit, mm-hmm. very small hominin um, in uh, remains of that in um, Western, uh, Western Flores. Uh, their, their reports came out uh, and hit the headlines indeed in the big way uh, towards the end of uh, 2004. And uh, I mean, for me, this was quite a, a revelation because the reconstructions and the one or two, you know, diagrams that have been or uh, drawings, I should say, had been produced of uh, Homo floresiensis, and uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, the, the, the whole story uh, struck me as being very, very similar to, to what I, I'd heard local people uh, talk about uh, before the paleontological uh, uh, discovery. So I. Um, I um, yeah continue to do research among the uh, the uh, Leo in 2005, which was next time uh, I went back. Um, but um, yeah, no, there's always there were always in those days certainly uh, always uh, other things getting in the way, other mm-hmm. things to do. But uh, I did have an opportunity. I, I got a, a major grant in uh, won it in uh, 20, 2013. I got an op- opportunity to go back to the Leo region. In in uh, 2014, and um, uh, to go back on on, on a, uh, an annual basis um, until uh, 2018, and, and that's when most of my uh, material about the Leo eight men, as I called them, uh, mm. was uh, was recorded. Mm. So yeah, and that that uh, of course it, it took me a couple of years to write the book. Um, so um, I, I retired at the end of 2019, uh, by the way, but but that's basically the the story that brings us um, brings us up to date yeah this is so interesting i i think that um i've done a, a little bit of reading on this and so it, it, as we're learning more about various human species it's it's interesting how various um anthropologists and, and many folks are are starting to uncover many things that we didn't know before about uh, about mm-hmm. humans and human species um and so your your, your book is, is so fascinating in that way um i think maybe to start um it may be helpful for listeners to kind of get an overview some listeners may not know that there have been different types of species of humans on the planet and some of them existed kind of at the same time yeah. um, it's it's not just homo sapiens right we always have denisovans right, right, yeah. we have homo erectus which is a little bit beforehand neanderthals etc and, and, the, and the ones you just mentioned so maybe give us the um maybe kind of broad overview of how we understand this and maybe here you could tell us the difference between you know hominoid hominin hominids there's a little bit of a nuance there but just tell us about these uh these the different species for for humans okay um well maybe i'll talk about hominins and hominids uh three very uh uh closely uh similar similar terms um Okay, hominins uh, include, um, well, in fact, all those terms you might say include uh, um, modern humans, uh, um, homo sapiens. Uh, hominins uh, include uh, all species uh, that are labeled homo, so homo sapiens, 
uh, Homo Neanderthalensis, so the Neanderthal man, so called. Homo erectus uh, uh, and so on. Yeah. And now, of course, we've got Homo floresiensis. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not much difference really between uh, hominid and hominoid. Hominid is, is the, the term they use to uh, refer to, uh, to a family in, in, uh, mm-hmm. in geological classification taxonomy. Uh, hominid uh, includes uh, the hominins. Mm-hmm. Um, that's us again, and uh, but it also includes uh, a, a great apes like, like chimpanzees and uh, yeah. uh, and gorillas. Uh, yeah. Hominoid, um, yeah, not to get too, too technical, but but it means more or less the same. It, it, it's those kinds of humans, if you will, those kinds of homo uh, plus other hominins plus plus uh, plus apes. Um, a hominoid simply means, you know, human-like, and, and it's often used, uh, and it's the way I use it in the book, mm-hmm. um, it, it's used to describe creatures that, that, that are, are human-like in, in some significant uh, respect. I use it both as an, an adjective and as a noun, so I talk mm-hmm. about uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, people reporting hominoids, because we don't know exactly uh, how what they're reporting should be classified. Uh, mm-hmm. Zoologically or biologically, I, I, mm. I like to stick with, with hominoid, which is more descriptive, mm. if you will, sort of, uh, sort of term. No? Yeah, that's very, very helpful. I think for most people, we understand that. Homo sapiens are the only ones that have survived or left or that are left on the mm-hmm. planet or maybe mm-hmm. more accurately um, we kind of pushed out Neanderthals maybe Denisovans and there's been a, there was a lot of uh, cross breeding that happened and so yeah. we kind of subsumed under them but I guess the the thing about this here is that we keep finding new types of hominoids uh, mm-hmm. as you mentioned we, we found the the Florentius uh, uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, homo uh, group and is it uh, speculated that there may be others that are out there we haven't yet discovered um, that have since died off as well yeah well I mean since homo fruisensis there, there have been uh, one or two or three others um, mm-hmm. uh, the Denisovans mm-hmm. which don't yet have a, a kind of a species name are they Look similar in some ways to, to Neanderthals, mm. um, late late Neanderthals, mm. uh, and uh, I, I mean we know that they, they interbred with, with Homo uh, sapiens. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is uh, Homo luzonensis, which is, is from the island of Luzon in the uh, in the Philippines, not very far away from uh, Indonesia. Um, uh, and that uh, has, has a date. Uh, um, I mean, the finds, uh, the remains have been found have been dated to about uh, sixty thousand years ago, which is you know similar to to Homo floresiensis. Mm. Um, there are the um, the Red Deer Cave uh, mm. uh, hominins that are found in, in in China, which which also haven't been given given their own special. Uh, you know, uh, taxonomic uh, label um, yet. So, um, I- indeed, I-, I mean, even, yeah, even, even before uh, um, Floresiensis was discovered, it, it was uh, becoming realized more and more by paleoanthropologists and paleontologists, anthropologists, mm-hmm. that uh, the, the human uh, or the hominin uh, family tree um, uh, was, in their words, uh, uh, bushy rather than a straight line. So you have mm-hmm. one thing replacing another. Um, you know, there were these branches uh, that that, uh, that that coexisted indeed for quite long periods of time. Um, I mean, so far as we know, uh, Homo sapiens evolved from uh, Homo erectus, so mm-hmm. which is a term that... Uh, um, yeah, so a rather general label because there are, are kind of specific uh, uh, geographical kinds of Homo erectus in, in East Asia, in, in Africa, mm-hmm. and um, and so on. I mean, they go back, uh, oh, um, you know, well over, uh, um, well, I won't say over, but around. It seems they, they go back to, to like two million years ago, and they... The, the, the uh, erectus or the erectines, if you know, if you're talking about a, a number of forms, um, survived to um, about a hundred thousand uh, years ago, which is terrific. Yeah. Uh, 
period of time. They're much more successful species than <laughs> we may mm-hmm. turn out to be. You know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, there, there were. Uh, I mean, not to get in, into specifics too much, but but uh, I, I mean, views of, of these things change over time um, with, with new discoveries, but also with new uh, sure. new dating techniques and, and so on. It, it was at one time thought that. Uh, um, one kind of erectus uh, survived to about thirty thousand years ago in in, mm. in Java, mm. Um, mm. but uh, anyway, you know, leaving that aside, you've got uh, um, erectus overlapping, uh, not necessarily in the same place, but you know, at sure. the same time on Earth, you've got um, erectus overlapping with Neanderthalensis uh, um, by, by uh, like you know uh, hundreds of thousands of, of years. Uh, uh, the Neanderthals uh, start showing up in the fossil record uh, over uh, 400,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they um, survived till about 40,000. I seem to recall 37,000 as uh, more, uh, a more specific term. Um, and then, of course, you've got sapiens going back, uh, you know, by the broadest definition of sapiens, going back about... 300,000 years ago, so you can see there's tremendous overlaps. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Floresiensis, well, what about Floresiensis? Uh, there's much more evidence, of course, for Neanderthals and, and uh, uh, Erectus than, than there is for Floresiensis. Floresiensis has only been, and this, you know, this can't be uh, emphasized enough, mm. um, that the, the remains, uh, fossil remains, have only been found uh, in a single site. Yeah. And we have dates for that site. Uh, it was originally very recent, the date um, given, uh, 12,000, 18,000, you know, depending on which, uh, um, which particular uh, individual you were, you were talking about to some extent. But, but now it can push back to 50 or, uh, or 60,000 um, hmm. years ago. But, but regardless of the date, uh, you know, the fact is that uh, um, we know from the, the, the different individuals that these uh, um, uh, hominins, Homo floresiensis, survived on Flores at least for tens of, of thousands of, of years. Um, there's no reason to believe they all lived in one cave all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, mm-hmm. you know, they must have been elsewhere on the uh, island. So, uh, simply stated, we we don't know, um, you know, how, how long they existed. Uh, mm. Um, after 60, 50,000 years ago. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I, I had a conversation a year or so ago with um, Jeremy De Silva, who he talks about, um, you know, bi- he, his one big thing is uh, bipedalism. And, you know, he kind of talks about in his book and in our conversation about how there was, he's not the only one, but there were other people that have talked about how there's this overlap where there was a lot of different species cohabitating the planet at the same time, which mm-hmm. is, is is so fascinating to to really imagine because we're the only ones left as far as we know and um, in terms of our species. And so it's it's interesting to think what it would be like to live with other, other, uh, other types of humans or other hominoids. I guess mm-hmm. the... the 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 main question here is uh, for for kind of what the whole book I think is centered around is the as you title it and you can maybe talk about the title if it's relevant is uh, the ape men uh, it's a very interesting uh, 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 name for them uh, is this the elusive uh, species X uh, that some people have uh, talked about are they a variant species of Florensians what is the ape men as much as we know um, and what what can we say uh, I guess definitively about you know just trying to classify um, who or what they are. Mm-hmm. Well, from the way people describe them, uh, um, they, they, they seem very similar indeed to Homo floresiensis. Um, at the same time, there have been uh, hominins on, on Flores, uh, according to some evidence, for you know, maybe a, a million years. Mm. Um, small-bodied hominins as well, not like floresiensis. And it's, uh, it's certainly possible that with that uh, amount of time that they would have evolved into you know, several different uh, branches, several different species. So um, let's assume that, that eight men are uh, are real and that they survived, you know, to, to the present. Then uh, they could be descendants of Homo floresiensis, of that species, or, or they could uh, they could be descendants of some cousin species to uh, mm. to floresiensis, the uh, um, 
you know, we can't make that determination. I do use the term species X in my introductory uh, chapter simply to refer to, um, um, well, uh, indeed, the, the, the eight man and, um, you know, following local descriptions. And uh, so species X in, in that context, uh, uh, contrast to uh, Homo floresiensis, uh, but only insofar as I'm saying Homo floresiensis is in that context a known entity, whereas species X, you know, the, the questions, uh, well, it's in the introductory chapter, so the question is to be explored in the rest of the, um, mm -hmm. the, rest of the book. Mm -hmm. what, what is it about, you had mentioned this a, a few minutes ago about um, uh, one of the groups and where there's only one single site. Maybe tell us about what the environment is like on the island of, of Flores and uh, how, how could it be uh, habitable uh, for for various human species, uh, so just kind of give us kind of the the drop us into the into the context of of the kind of environment in which uh, these folks are, are are living in. Yeah, um, I, I might just jump in there and say I mean it's, it's interesting human uh, or rather uh, uh, the English language. You know, uh, talking about uh, hominins, uh, uh, Frisiensis, were they human? You know, were, were Neanderthals human? Uh, mm -hmm. It's not actually a, a scientific term, a, a more philosophical term, mm -hmm. as well as a term in, in our everyday uh, language. Uh, can they be both folk, uh, um, which you know, suggests something like a, a definite sort of culturally distinct ethnic group or whatever? That, that's a bit uh, um, you know, beside the point. The geography, well, um, Flores is, um, is uh, I think it's the 10th largest Indonesian island, so it, it's not, uh, you know, like something in a you know, Micronesian atoll or something. It's fa fairly large. Mm -hmm. uh, I think about 400 square, um, 400 uh, kilometer, uh, yeah, 400 kilometers long. Mm -hmm. uh, the area is 14, over 14,000 square kilometers. It, it's long and thin. It's very mountainous. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and apart from that, Partly for that reason, it, it, it's quite different from one, you know, in terms of uh, uh, of climate and um, vegetation from from uh, um, you know one place to uh, one place to another. Um, most uh, most modern humans, physically modern humans, uh, live uh, as one might expect near, near the near the coast. Sure. Um, and in fact, I, well, during the 20th century, um, the, the, there's been a movement of, of, of uh, people uh, um, from more interior uh, locations to, to, to the coast or towards the, uh, the coast, uh, or indeed, uh, you know, during the colonial period, you had uh, the construction of, of highways. Um, roads, at any rate, so, so people move closer to uh, roads, which many of, of which the main roads are are, uh, are in valleys or or, or, or they're you know close to the uh, uh, to the coast. So I, I, the only point I'm making there is a lot of highland areas, forested uh, highland, mountainous mm -hmm. uh, mountain forests, indeed, um, where, where something distinct from Homo sapiens could. Uh, could indeed uh, live, and, and uh, the Leo people themselves uh, say that yeah, this is where uh, where you find the um, the, the ape men, the, the Laihoa, to mm. use their uh, their local uh, their, their local term. Mm. Um, but there is well, I, I won't go into details. In fact, this is not really my field. But uh, in terms of plant foods, yeah, there, there, there's there's a lot, including wild plant foods, which uh, um, modern humans uh, uh, still take advantage of mm. um, animals. Well, it's not rich in, in uh, it's not rich in, in uh, mammalian uh, uh, species, but uh, you do have a lot of birds uh, and reptiles. A lot of things like uh, um, uh, well, uh, crustaceans, insects, gastropods, and so on. All of which, uh, mm. or, or some of which, also are um, you know uh, exploited by. Uh, by humans, but I, I would think there is enough uh, uh, enough uh, food to go around. One of the few criticisms of my thesis that I've heard is is that you know um, uh, 
Flores is a small island. Well, it, it's not actually that small. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the resources aren't sufficient uh, to support the uh, uh, population of humans and the population of, of uh, non-humans, like, uh, like the ape men. I, you know, that, that really um, is not a very uh, uh, definite argument uh, at all um, is it being the eco ecological um, argument where it says you know well they couldn't possibly exist because you know that there's not enough food for it that that, uh, mm. that, that, that sort of thing um, yeah so so um I, I i think that there probably is uh, especially as you go higher in the mountains there's more water than uh, the area mm -hmm. tends to be better watered than uh, many lowland uh, um, Maybe tell us about the Leo people uh, and, and and how they they fit into the story here and how they're important for understanding the the ape men. <clears throat> yeah, um, well, for, for me, they're interesting in a number of respects, but but in the context of the book, I and mean, their main importance is because they uh, they offer these uh, they claim the, to 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 experience. Uh, uh, these creatures to to have uh, to have seen them in, in over thirty cases, um, and and they offer um, good uh, good descriptions. I, I mean, one of my approaches was uh, uh, to this uh, topic was through the study of um, uh, of Leo folk biology, uh, mm -hmm. folk zoology, more specifically. You know, what what do they know about uh, local animals of uh, of all sorts, uh, and the ape men are, uh, they, they classify them as a, a kind of animal, they're very rare and uh, a, a, an unusual kind because they um, they so much resemble humans. At the same time, they also describe them as being intermediate between humans and uh, uh, and monkeys or, or, or apes, uh, hence, mm. hence the uh, hence my choice, um, part of my uh, part of the reason for my choice in the name. Uh, the name Ape Man. Mm. Mm. So maybe you can give us a, a just a kind of description of of what we know about the Ape Man. We will get into some of the accounts in a minute, but yeah. you know, what are just what's the kind of basic on a on a kind of cumulative uh, way of from all the accounts and things like that? The basic physical uh, description of the the Ape Man in terms of features, hair, genitals, mm -hmm. height, etc. Yeah. You know, the tails or no tails. What, what what can we just as a kind of profile of sorts? Yeah, yeah. But of course, uh, I'm just about everybody who asks if you if you uh, raise the term, raise the name, uh, alive or I would say they sort of know what it is. Uh, um, uh, so so you know there are people who who uh, have heard about these things, know about these things without uh, claiming to to have seen one. Mm. Um, they are, but, but you know both both sorts of accounts, what I call popular accounts and, and the eyewitness accounts. Uh, are, are pretty similar, I and mean, we're talking about. But they don't, you know, entirely. Um, well, no single account entirely agrees with uh, with any other single account. Sure. But um, yeah, generally that they are uh, that they're small. That they're a, 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 around a meter, and that's a standard kind of uh, response. Uh, if you ask people, well, you know, uh, how tall are they? It's all about a meter. You know, they they'll indicate that height with, the, with their hand. Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty good on the metric system, by the way. They, they you know, it, it is their own. They've incorporated mm -hmm. it into their uh, mm -hmm. everyday uh, um, yeah, discussions about uh, about things, and they're good at estimating. I, I discovered, but um, yeah, around a meter. So, so you're going to get some that, that uh, are uh, particularly with uh, with the um, the eyewitness accounts. You're, you're going to get some specimens that, that are less than that. Uh, some a bit uh, a bit more but but to say yeah in general about a meter that would uh, that would cover the height um they are um they are uh, what else can i say i was a small featured in terms of hands and and to some extent feet although there's a qualification there um but the, in terms the, of, the of hair, what, what about hair? Oh, hair. Well, yeah, no, I mean, they are generally described as hairy, but if, if you, you get into details, those people are able to give uh, more detailed accounts, you, they, they don't seem to be quite that hairy, not, not hairy like a bear. Mm -hmm. um, they describe the head hair as not being particularly um, 
uh, longer than, than the body the body hair mm. although yeah, somewhat thicker the, the hair is uh, the head hair is also um, and this is interesting uh, um, invariably I think you could say described as as straight mm. so it's not curly or, or frizzy or, or anything like that which mm. uh, is interesting um, partly because the Leo themselves and other other Eastern Indonesians, other Flores Islanders, uh, um, do themselves uh, have have you know tight curls or or, uh, hmm. or, or, or frizzy frizzy hair. So that that's a definite uh, a definite um, difference there. The skin color is uh, I mean, most people also suggest the skin color is not much different from their own, which is pretty dark even by Indonesian standards. Uh, a few say it's darker. Than uh, the skin of, uh, of local uh, local people. Um, you, you mentioned tails. I think um, whether they have uh, whether they have tails. Well, yeah. certainly if they did, um, that then they, they couldn't be hominins or, or even apes for that matter, because uh, apes don't right. have uh, tails. Um, I do discuss this head on. In, in chapter two, the claim by some people, by no means all, that they have tails. Uh, uh, and if you look at uh, um, the, the evidence, the testimony of people who say they have tails, it turns out these tails are, are very short, hmm. a couple of centimeters, a few centimeters long, um, an inch, a couple of inches, or uh, or, or indeed that, that they can't be seen, they're, they're covered in, in the hair or whatever. My conclusion from looking at that problem is, is that. Um, it, it, it they they are thought to um, to have tails, uh, and sometimes you know that answer comes from um, uh, asking people whether or not they're tails. You know, one always needs to avoid uh, leading questions. But um, my my interpretation is that this has to do with their classification as a kind of animal, hmm. and they're quite sure they're not humans. They're not humans like us people say. Mm. And uh, not not to give uh, too many details, but uh, it's animals that have tails, even when they don't. Mm. <laughs> what do I mean by that? We're just there to uh, give you one example. Um, certain birds and, and frogs are described as tailless, uh -huh. but uh, when, when they're counted in the Lear language, that they're given tails because. Uh, to count an animal in, in Leo, um, you, you have to specify a number of tail. So, so for, for three horses, for example, you would say uh, something that, that sort of over translates as three tails of horse. Mm. So, so tails and animals go together. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's what, what's coming across. They, yeah. they also, by the way, I mean, there are some people now who... Um, um, men, uh, younger men especially, who have been to uh, uh, to, to Borneo mm -hmm. uh, as migrant uh, labourers uh, mostly, and, and who um, who are, are familiar, somewhat familiar, um, from their Bornean experiences with with gibbons, uh, mm -hmm. kind of ape, mm -hmm. uh, and orangutans, another kind of ape. And yet, even though they say they've seen these things, which they, they might well have in the case of, of gibbons, um, they, they they identify them as having tails hmm. Um, hmm. because they otherwise look like monkeys. Hmm. It sounds like it's, a, again, a, 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 this type of way in which to describe uh, a kind of in-between, right? If it's, if it's not a human, yeah. maybe it's closer to an animal, and so it's this kind of this interesting logic that's going on there. Yeah, I guess um, yeah. with the uh, the Leo people, I guess we can just talk a little bit here about, before we get to, I guess, some of the accounts, how do we, you, you talk about in the book about how we understand some of the ideas about supernatural claims, you know, you talk about forest yeah. spirits and vine mothers and some very interesting ideas, wow. and then the idea of, of myths and legends, and, and so we have those types of things in our own, uh, in, in Western American culture as well. How do we, how do we, where does the idea of the, the ape men fit into these ideas of supernatural things or, or myths mm -hmm. or legends? How do, how do we understand it in that context? Right. Um, well, ape men are described as having, um, uh, having some qualities that, that, that we would classify as, as supernatural. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but then so, so do you know a number of other um, a number of other animals that, which um, are, are recognised by uh, uh, academic biologists. So mm. um, you know to, to say they have supernatural uh, attributes doesn't mean that they're completely um, fictitious. Mm-hmm. I um, yeah, I mean as regards myths, they, they don't. Uh, I do um, discuss myths. Uh, which feature eight men, but there are not actually too many of those. I mean, there are basically two sorts. So you hear occasionally a sort of an origin myth, hmm. um, which um, basically says that um, eight men derived from human beings who committed incest or, or what have you. Hmm. Um, interestingly enough, the same, much the same story is told about monkeys, and, and it is... Uh, Commonly, the I mean, where they do have a, an origin myth about um, the origin of a particular animal, um, you know, the, the idea, the principle is, is that it came from uh, from a human being. Oh. Um, so it's kind of like uh, Darwin, uh, Darwin upside down, you might um, <laughs> you might say. Anyway, the, those origin myths are, are one kind of mythical tale, and another. Um, Another kind, and several variants of this uh, are recorded, um, concern um, ape men uh, being exterminated by, for some reason, for some definite reason, um, because they kidnap children or whatever. Um, being, um, yeah, exterminated uh, um, by local humans uh, after they the eight men take refuge in, in a cave and the cave is the cave is satellite. Um that's quite an interesting just as a myth. I mean that's interesting because you find that in a number of uh, a number of places, um, including among the, the Nago people uh, further to the um, further to the, the, the west. Mm. And um in one or two pl- other places uh, in, in um, actually Sri Lanka, they have a a myth of that uh, mm. of that uh, that sort. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I I take pains in the book to explain my use of, of myth. Yeah. Um, uh, in contrast to legend and, and you know various other kinds of uh, stories or, uh, or or reports. Um, yeah, no, I, I, a myth uh, is. Uh, a story that that's kind of uh, well predominantly uh, um, predominantly fantastic. It uh, contains you know um, supernatural themes. I have uh, like you know people or animals or whatever turning into um, animals of, of of other kinds and uh, yeah. and so. Which, are, by the way, I think that uh, a good many people dispute can can happen at, at present. Myths are uh, usually in in a um, well, more than usually, I mean, by by definition, you say myths are said in a kind of uh, an indefinite, you know, past, as a once upon a time kind of quality. Mm. Yeah, myths have one. Well, I, I think it's I think it's important. But again, let me let me just add a bit to that, if I may. Yeah. I, I um, yeah. you know, you, you, one thing you find in myths the world over is animals, like common mm. animals, mm-hmm. um, that 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 talk, and you know. Interact with humans uh, in in that way, uh, um, linguistically, verbally. Um, where where people you know don't expect animals to talk in, in the here and now. So this is a myth is a, is a, a kind of domain in, in which uh, another set of uh, rules um, um, are, are obtained. Hmm. So you know what what people believe about animals. So yeah, you can't. You usually can't infer that from what what uh, what happens in uh, in myths. Whereas I say, you know, animals uh, uh, marry human beings, or all uh, oh, uh, talking sort of says it all. I think. Yeah, it's 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 interesting because I think that people will will make you know you know certain uh, claims about things, and when people are trying to understand something or or an entity or being, and they're not quite sure where to fit, you know, people have different ways of describing that. We have that in our own past history, 
Mm-hmm. Um, you, 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 and you do a really nice job, uh, I think, uh, almost like in a surgical way of trying to say, okay, here's what, here's some ideas here. Here's some ideas here. Here's some ideas here. Here's where it fits. Here's where it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And, and you take the same kind of approach with, um, with the accounts, which is kind of the biggest thing, um, uh, of people that have, um, you know, seen the ape men, um, or heard about it or known people that have seen them. So you kind of go, I think, um, uh, kind of tertiary to more kind of primary, right? So you start with the secondhand accounts and then you go to the the more eyewitness accounts. Um, and so maybe you can group it however way you want, if you want to group it that way, but you know, how many reports have there been? Um, what's the value of the secondhand versus the firsthand accounts? And and what are some of the uh, actual um, uh, depictions and, and events that have happened that are somewhat convincing, uh, at, cool. least to, at least to yourselves or, or that people believe about? Well, well I, I actually I start with, with myths, you know, as you indicated, and then I go to legends mm-hmm. and then... Uh, right. Secondhand accounts and um, secondhand accounts where, where people um, um, tell me what was told to them by, by uh, um, a, a, a reputed uh, eyewitness, and then I go to the actual uh, uh, eyewitness account. Secondhand accounts, uh, I wasn't able to um, speak to the person who, whose experiences I uh, described, uh, just about all cases, because some. Um, because that person was already dead, you know, so that, that, mm-hmm. that, that that's the reason. Um, yeah, no, that they do very consistently, actually. The, 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 the different types of stories get more realistic, more naturalistic as you go from myth to mm. um, present day um, present day sightings, which you know is is uh, <laughs> is, is, a, is a kind of evidence that, that we know we're not talking about dragons or unicorns. It was something that uh, <laughs> is. Uh, um, primarily, um, primarily uh, mythical and mythological. Um, yeah, I do. I, I mean, when it comes to uh, eyewitnesses, I, I do group them as well mm. in, in terms of, of several explicit criteria of of, uh, of credibility. Um, you know, whenever you're, um, well, doesn't matter who it is uh, doing what sort of uh, analysis or interpretation, there's always a, a, a subjective uh, sure. element uh, here. Sure. And I, I, I was quite aware of that. And I was always uh, endeavoring to, uh, to, to, to control it. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite confident in, in that, that progression, if you will. Uh, to um, to, to uh, eyewitness accounts and uh, and then to uh, uh, a classification of eyewitness accounts themselves. I mean, the most uh, what I find the most compelling, what I think are the most compelling, generally, uh, are um, a, a number that are told towards the end of uh, chapter six, mm. and then in chapter seven, I. Um, I, I, I feature, uh, I, do, I describe at length the uh, three uh, accounts which I, I find the most the most compelling um, for different different reasons uh, in, in the three different uh, cases. Also, uh, in chapter eight, uh, and this was a chapter I inserted quite late in, in writing the book, uh, uh, concerns a sighting uh, that took place outside of Leo and in the Nage region, where I, I you know most of my Ethnography was uh, was done, uh, and that interestingly enough uh, um, reports something uh, a creature that uh, is very very similar to. Uh, mm. uh, I yeah, let's just stick with very similar to the uh, the Leo uh, the Leo ape man. Um, so I mean, my, the question I raised there was, well, you know, if these things occur in Leo country, why not elsewhere? In mm. the, my response to myself as well, that they do, you know, and uh, so some evidence for that. So, um, 
yeah, sorry, I, I forget where the original question was. Uh, well, the, it's just just kind of about the the, the ideas of the second versus uh, eyewitness accounts, and I guess uh, what you you talk about in the book. Um, I think there was there was one account. Maybe you you can you can share some of it here. I mean, obviously, people can read the book for the long form version of it, but there is one oh. account in particular that was, um, I mean, pretty. You know, striking to, to to me when I read it about where <clears throat> there was a an accident with a car and there were yeah. and one of the eight men was hit and all these yeah. maybe just kind of tell us about that that, that was one of the yeah. most convincing to me when I was reading I don't know if it was okay. for you as well, well but that's that's interesting to to, to hear uh, because I think other people may you know pick another one but uh, I um something I want to say first of all is that um yeah so I I kind of group these stories. Uh, according mm -hmm. to a number of criteria. One or more of those, those criteria has to do with the, the, the personalities and, and, and uh, um, sort of social standing, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera, of, of the, um, of the uh, claimed eyewitnesses. And, uh, and there were some stories I, I rejected uh, uh, largely on, on those, kinds of, uh, those kinds of grounds. Um, I... Um, yeah, you know, trying to be uh, trying to be fair all the uh, uh, all, all the time, um, and, and indeed, I mean, this kind of research as now just it, it's well, the book is as much a study of the Leo people, I think, or nearly as much a study of the Leo mm -hmm. people as it is of these uh, these uh, these eight men. Anyway, uh, having said that, another story you talk about is um, it concerns not a car but a, a truck. Even though yeah. you're not going to find many cars on the island. <laughs> um, yeah, it was an old uh, kind of bone shaker, I imagine, of a, of a truck, which uh, um, it's just occurred back in the, 90, the early 1970s when uh, the, the Colombo plan, if you've uh, have you ever heard of that, it was operative in, uh, uh, in Flores Island, other parts of Indonesia as well, and, and they're mainly concerned with, with fixing up roads, which were in a mm. pretty bad state, and, and bridges indeed. And uh, um, this truck contained a, a, a work crew um, with a driver, obviously, a, a number of other men, including uh, my my, uh, my informant, a man I, I call Volo. Mm. And uh, who was in, in the back of this truck um, near the cab? So you know, looking ahead, um, they, they were going through. Um, the, the accident took place on the, what, what the highest part of the highway, which extends from one end of Flores to uh, to another, an area which uh, gets a lot of rain, regardless of season. Mm. Um, you know, you get you get uh, mist coming down, even as far as the road sometimes. Um, so cloud is, in fact, is what it uh, what it is. But um, uh, so they were going along. This was in in January. I think probably most likely about 1972. And uh, uh, the the road is terribly windy. I mean, it just, you know, you could, you could generalize and say that the, the whole Trans Flores Highway is is uh, windy anyway. Mm -hmm. They're coming around a curve, and um, something that descended from the bank on on, on the left. They're driving on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. and um, and 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 the, the the driver couldn't stop in time, and he, he struck the uh, the creature, and um, everybody got out to look at it, and they were dead by this time. Mm. And um, the 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 the, uh, the the driver, who was a Leo man indeed, uh, uh, a Highlander uh, originally, said it was uh, it was a life oh, an ape man. Um, mm -hmm. my, my informant, Volo, uh, he was from a bit outside the vicinity in, uh, from, from the Ende region, uh, and he had never heard this term before, or, nor was he familiar with the kind of creature to which it, uh, mm -hmm. to which it referred. And then anyway, as I relate in the rest of the story, that they proceeded on uh, for various reasons, uh, um, that they proceeded on to, to Ende town, where they were supposed to be before nightfall um that they the driver especially wanted to bury it mm. um now what's that all about well <laughs> read the book I, I you know i don't want to get to too uh sure sure uh, 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 too, too digressive here um uh, anyway they they, they plan to come up uh, to come back that way the next day 
uh, which they did. And they found the body, which they wrapped in an old shirt and put inside the, the road and so on. Then they found it, found it gone, which my uh, informant put, put a rather mystical interpretation on. Hmm. Um, but uh, it's more likely it got dragged off by an animal, you know, a, a wild dog or a, a pig or a wild pig. Hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that was, uh, you know, um, that, that was the end of that, uh, hmm. that particular story. But I, the man himself was, uh, again, I, I won't try to go into details, but I, he, he was an older man and somebody who... Uh, to me, seemed to be completely well, almost naive, you might say, in, in one of the best senses, in an innocent uh, mm. type. In fact, I people who um, um, people who heard his testimony with me, I mentioned after that, that you know this guy was pure was a word they <laughs> that, that they uh, they use. I mean, was somebody who who unlike some of the other people I mentioned, uh, you know, it was difficult to to doubt. Um, yeah, so that was one of the most uh, compelling. That's in chapter seven, and then in the same chapter, of course, there are uh, there are other um, quite compelling uh, uh, reports. Uh, all the ones in chapter seven uh, involve more than one person, mm -hmm. more than one human uh, mm -hmm. uh, encountering um, a, 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 an ape man uh, or, or more than one. There, there are I mean, some of the best accounts, you might say, in the preceding chapter. Chapter six are um, uh, similarly involved. Uh, um, yeah, two or two or more more people. So not not who not all of whom could be interviewed, mind you, because they died in the meantime or whatever. Sure. But um, yeah, so 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 they that that criterion obviously is uh, important for me. Yeah, I was going to say you give a a, a handful of accounts that are, are are you know quite compelling to read and. I, I mean, I highly encourage um, <clears throat> folks, obviously, to buy the book and to read them. It's it's very, very fascinating. And I would say that there's the with, with all these accounts, there's a type of uh, element that's needed, which is a type of where is there consistency with things, right? Mm -hmm. How 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 is there similarities? Obviously, each story is going to be a little different, and you're relying yeah. on people's memories and things like that. But do you want to have some kind of consistency? And so, for you, I guess, what are some, what are some of those consistencies that you see in all of the accounts from people? And mm -hmm. what is it that is you know I guess most compelling for you to say? There's something to this. There's something here. This isn't just yeah. you know stories. You know what 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 are some of those features? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I will say, first of all, that of, of the 30-odd uh, claimed eyewitness accounts, there were uh, seven, uh, I think it is, that, that I dismissed as, as, as not reflecting uh, an encounter, an observation of, uh, of an ape man. Um, in fact, in just about all, all those seven cases, I think people had seen, usually at night, by the way, or in you know, conditions mm -hmm. where... Uh, the light wasn't good. Um, they, they had seen, um, most, most likely, a, a, a monkey. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, so, so that, that's, you know, I, I, I don't claim that all, um, all accounts have, you know, some, some merit. Uh, but um, what did the rest look like? Well, they, they were... Uh, yeah, as I described, you know, the, the, these were small-bodied creatures between well, most of them, uh, sighting wise, uh, most of them between sixty or seventy um, centimeters tall and, and and a meter or more. So you know, that uh, sort of uh, uh, accord. Well, that does accord with what I told you earlier. Um, that they, they, they were they were hairy. They were. Uh, um, uh, Monkey faced or, or ugly, as they uh, mm -hmm. they often say, and so on and so forth. So I, I got the impression with, with you know the ones I didn't exclude, the accounts I didn't exclude that, that they were indeed all referring to the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Different sizes, maybe representing you know different sexes or different uh, mm -hmm. different um, uh, ages yeah. or, or, or or what uh, what what have you. I mean, some had. Uh, you know, gray hair, um, which uh, 
Um, it could, could well account for it. For, uh, it could be explained by an elderly uh, specimen being an elderly uh, individual. Um, mm. Yeah, so... so uh, Basically, I, I, you know, it, it was it was easy to show that these were the, the same same kind of thing. Nobody was describing a monitor lizard or, a, <laughs> you know, a, or a bird running on two legs across a road or um, mm-hmm. um, yeah, something something of that sort. Mm, yeah. So, you know, you 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 go through all of these these accounts, and you provide the 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 data and again you're you're very um almost again surgical in this saying look this is not this this is not this you know we have to be careful which conclusions we make here so you know so you're, you're very very um judicious in that way of doing that which yeah. i think is, is 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 right you know i think that's great you know to know so after after all of this you know kind of this is towards the, the back half of the book or, or excuse me the the tail end of the book um you know what? What can we say about what's going on here? You know about these uh, accounts that people have uh, have, and and what they've seen, and and what can we say? I mean, obviously the best. I mean, <clears throat> the best. You know, evidence would be a, you know, video or picture or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that would be you know the the holy grail there. But I mean, what 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 can we say about all of the data that has uh, that has been there and and uh, and what you've what you've uh, collected. Well, I, I um, yeah, I think as I've already indicated, I, I, I explore a number of, of hypotheses in, in different chapters. Uh, um, one being that you know it's completely a, a imaginary sort of a being, something like a spirit, and so on. There's no uh, basis in uh, uh, in perception uh, for uh, um, for this this kind of creature. I, I talk about. Uh, um, the possibility that, that uh, not just a few people, but 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 everyone is as they've seen this as seeing a monkey. Um, another possibility, a bare possibility, is that what's being described is is an ape, a tailless uh, ape, uh, um, and, and that even that there, there could be an undiscovered species of, of ape on uh, um, on flowers. I mean, this is highly unlikely. In some ways, even more likely than uh, you might say. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, one or more species of, uh, of non non sapiens hominins uh, surprise um, surviving. Um, yeah, it's definitely more unlikely than that. Another one is is that what may be being reported are odd individuals belonging to an undiscovered uh, and presumably physically small mm. um, human uh, population, uh, modern, modern human population, uh, people like like. Negritos, which is a term that's usually given to uh, uh, Southeast Asian pigmies, as they are sometimes. Mm. Uh, but again, um, you know that there are arguments about that. So anyway, I, I, you know, my conclusion is: look, if you if you go through all these uh, um, possibilities in relation to the evidence, the reports by um, the people themselves, the, the best explanation is that they have indeed. Or most of them, or many of them, have indeed seen uh, something, uh, um, an animal, and, and something that corresponds very closely to uh, the way ape men are generally described, and uh, by the same token, uh, corresponds closely to something like uh, Homo thuringiensis. So it's a kind of a believe it or not, uh, mm-hmm. as strange as it may seem, um, kind of um, kind of uh, argument that I. I said it's, it's the old Sherlock Holmes method, you know, mm-hmm. where you try to solve a, a crime, you look at all possible solutions, right? Uh, and you exclude those one one by one, and then the one that remains uh, um, has to be true, uh, as right. improbable as it may uh, right. may seem. Um, the, the, the problem with that approach, of course, is is that uh, you know how how do you know that you've uh, mm-hmm. you, you've uh, <laughs> You've considered all the the possibilities, um, mm-hmm. yeah. And so philosophically, it's a bit uh, a bit challenging that one. But that's that's the um, mm. that, that's the the method. So in a way, I'm not saying I, I um, well, I am a skeptic. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a, an out and out complete skeptic. Sure. Um, but I do take a, a skeptical approach, and, and I, I try to show on, on empirical grounds or on rational grounds that this is the best uh, 
know, it's strange, isn't it? So this is the best explanation, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, on the one hand, the claim could be, well, maybe this is just a small human, right? And they just, they just, they're just, you know, some tribe that we haven't found. Although all of the things that you say in the descriptions uh, make that very unlikely. Um, yeah. And I think what's, you know, different than say like, oh, well, this is just their version of Bigfoot, right? You know, well, the difference is, is that people haven't really actually seen Bigfoot, right? I mean, they maybe some claims, but there's, you know, not really. Have, but, yeah. yeah, it's, it's yeah. and I think the difference is, is that it's been over many years, different types yeah. of people, there's enough consistency and continuity. I mean, there's enough things there that make it, um, you know, both secondhand and eyewitness and th there's been encounters, you know, uh, yeah. of sorts with, with it. So there's, there's different difference there. I guess it, just to do, um, you know, just one thing before I ask my last question, which is hypothetically, right? We'll just, we'll just do the hypothetical here. Mm -hmm. How is it? I mean, we don't know, right? But uh, what could you speculate, let's say, on how the ape men could could live where are they living how could they live um are they isolated do they what could you speculate about how their you know kind of living is in in, in, in that region yeah um well i they, they if they survive they survive by staying uh, well away from humans or as far away as they they, they can uh, so um but they, they occupy, for the most part, high mountain uh, mm. uh, forests where the people don't go, where people uh, rarely go. Um, they are described largely as plant eaters, by the way. Hmm. Um, I, I won't go into details there, but, 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 but a few people say that they eat only, only plants. Um, and, uh, yeah, as I was saying earlier, I, I mean, there are, you know, various, uh, uh, tubers, shoots, uh, fruits, uh, nuts, plants of various, uh, sorts that, uh, that they could, uh, they could live on. They are, of course, small bodied. I mean, sure. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that, that, uh, that is, is an advantage. I mean, with regard to, uh, Homo parisiensis, the, um, the, the one uh, one hypothesis uh, accounting for their uh, small size is that they've become smaller since they arrived by whatever means or from wherever on 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 the island that they were they were bigger in the beginning and they have really become uh, mm. uh, smaller and uh, well, perhaps we could say smaller and smaller until they've uh, reached their their present size. So this is this would be a, a, an adaptation to. Uh, um, you know, uh, relatively limited, uh, limited uh, um, resources, and um, yeah, so um, that, that they could, you know, eat what they've always uh, eaten. Uh, um, except that there are reports of, of uh, well, there are reports of these things being quite clever, which, which makes mm. a kind of uh, kind of sense, even as, even as, in in spite of the small brain size. Um, uh, we, we know monkeys' nature can be quite separate, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what was I going to say there? Yeah, no, I, I, there, there are uh, um, many statements about them uh, stealing, stealing crops, mm. um, which, which means that ever since humans on the island uh, um, became uh, uh, cultivators as opposed to hunters and, and, and gatherers and, and started raising... Uh, Animals like like, like chickens and and, uh, and pigs that, that that that's you know provided another that's a risky source of food but but another source of food for uh, this other kind of uh, of hominin. They're also I mean there's, there's uh, evidence as I show in the book that they they have become partly nocturnal. Mm. Um, it's, yeah, it's... which which makes make makes uh, makes sense. Animals, uh, by the way, of all sorts, can uh, uh, become nocturnal or, or uh, cease to be nocturnal. Um, they were formerly nocturnal quite quite quickly in in, in relation to uh, changed uh, ecological um, mm -hmm. circumstances. So, um, so almost like a type I, of ad I, I, adaptation. <laughs> I um I, I mean there is an idea. Oh well, you know, if they existed, one would have been discovered by now. Well, <laughs> a couple of answers to that. First of all, they have been discovered by the Leo people. Uh huh. 
Uh-huh. That right. <laughs> and right. another one is that, that you know uh, they're only undiscovered until they're discovered. So you know mm-hmm. you just don't know what's uh, what, what's going to show up uh, and when and where. Yeah, I mean, and there are there are <clears throat> um, you know accounts of certain tribes that are mm-hmm. very reclusive in the Amazon yeah. that you know people, uh-huh. I mean have i mean aside from other tribes that even don't associate with them you know west the western world or or the modern world certainly has i mean extremely if any information on you know tribe we don't have information on all the tribes on the on the planet no, uh, so, the, no. so there are human uh, groups that we don't know about you know and or 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 haven't even discovered you know so i mean there's it's not out of the realm of of possibility uh, well, on 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 kind of on that note my my last question here for you is the reason for all of this is you know, some people may listen to this and say, well, you know, this is speculative or, you know, whatever. Why do we care? And, and, I, and I, I think the interesting thing about it is, is that this is something about, you know, a, a, a distant kind of relative potentially or a species within, mm. you know, homin- hominoids. Like the, this is something connected or close, you know, to us, which is an, even if it wasn't right, it was another kind of animal or species. But that's something that is so fascinating there, especially if they're potentially still living. Um, and, and or how could we understand more about the different groups of, of um, uh, hominoids, whether they're past or present? And, and how do we learn more and more and more about, about uh, hominoids? And so I guess the, the, the final question here on this is, you know, what is the thing that you hope people get from your book, aside from some really cool uh, accounts? What is it that you oh. want people to kind of walk away with uh, uh, from reading it? Yeah, well, I'm glad you said some some really cool accounts because, as I as I say uh, on that, you know, I, I, I conceived this primarily as a book of, of stories, which mm-hmm. uh, I think people will find uh, um, compelling and and and, uh, and interesting and and uh, worth reading in their own right, whatever yeah. their own uh, you know ultimate. Uh, um, Conclusions. I mean, I hope uh, people, including uh, academics, uh, uh, might become uh, somewhat more uh, uh, open-minded. Yeah. Um, on, on the other hand, if anybody can come up with with a better explanation of, of what people are seeing or, or think they're seeing, um, and and that would you know um, uh, solve the problem that that I. <laughs> That I investigate here. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess you should say to my satisfaction as well. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know what I mean. I, I, I would be, I would be very, very pleased. But I, um, I, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, among social and cultural anthropologists uh, uh, who assume, tend to assume uh, that these things are completely imaginary um the, the the explanations of as anyone is that uh, these are all you know symbolic ideas that uh, are socially constructed and uh, you mm-hmm. know express dominant uh, uh, values and, and interests and uh, okay that's all very well but when somebody um you know says, says uh, somebody who, who is uh, in all respects quite quite credible in the circumstances of the sighting are uh, are credible says you know he, he or she has seen one of these things and this is what it looked like and and right. so on um you know you you don't <laughs> you don't see a symbol unless it's uh sort of drawn on a wall or uh, yeah well, uh, and, and, on a, and i think that there's uh, multiple accounts of people that have never met each other people uh, that you know don't, you know that through different right. time periods you know and there's something and you know, yeah. Yeah. Hard, hard to know what it exactly is, but uh, I think uh, I think what you the way you try to tackle it and approach it, I think is is is, is quite fair. And I yeah. think it, you come at with from the skeptic perspective, which I think is is really 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 helpful. Um, oh. Well, the book is called Between Ape and Human: An Anthropologist on the Trail of a Hidden Hominoid. Uh, I'm assuming people can pick this up anywhere. Um, where's the best place to get the book and where's the best places to, for people to uh, find you and any of your work? Uh, well, I, I, um, yeah, if you, if you Google the book and, and, and uh, the title of my name, you'll, you'll find information on where people can uh, buy it, uh, which, which, you know, local outlets in your area 
um, uh, will be selling it or should be selling it. Dare I say, you you could order it uh, through uh, through 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 Amazon. Um, <laughs> I think I, I prefer people to go to local booksellers, sure. but uh, sure. yeah, various ways. It, it was it was out in the in North America. I came out yesterday, so. Uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, supplies should be increasing. Uh, if you want to know anything about me, I, I um, yeah, you, you can Google my name and you'll find uh, you'll find something on the internet uh, concerning previous publications uh, mm. uh, as um, a, a, as well. Um, I mean, if anybody has something, um, well, I tell you, I've had quite a few emails from people who just heard the story from the scientist or one of these uh, mm-hmm. science magazines. Um, I've had a couple of people that uh, have been quite abusive, actually. Uh, this mm. is a topic that upsets some people. Oh, wow. Uh, it is, uh, within the anthropological definition as well, it is a, a taboo topic, mm. which, which interests me as much as anything. Mm. But I uh, know a lot of other people uh, have, uh, um, you know, made comments, asked questions, and so on. I've tried to, you know, reply to them uh, mm. um, when, when, I, uh, when I could. Yeah, no, I think that's it's because she is my great. public duty as an academic. As that's as right. As yeah, that's great. I about taxpayers and all that. <laughs> that's great. Well, look, Greg, this has uh, been such a wonderful conversation. The book is super interesting, and um, I uh, can't say enough thanks for you uh, coming on and uh, and talking to me about it. Yeah, we didn't talk about memory, but maybe another uh, another day. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks.